Here at the National Hurricane Center, it's around 1130 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, August 1st, coming to you live this morning as we're now entering into the peak months of the uh, 2023 hurricane season. I want to give you a little bit of an update about what's going on today and uh, what's happened so far this season and what uh, what we're looking at as we head into those peak months of August, September and October. So what we're looking at here across the satellite image across the uh, tropical Atlantic this morning, not showing a whole lot of activity, especially things are pretty quiet across the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico. We have a couple of active tropical waves in the eastern tropical Atlantic, as we'd start to expect to see this time of year. We also have a weak area of low pressure to the southeast of Bermuda that's producing some disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity. And we could see that system go on and become a tropical depression. We're giving it a 50% chance over the next two to three days of the system becoming a tropical depression as it turns northward and moves northward and north northeastward across the central Atlantic, uh, well to the east of Bermuda. So no threat to any land areas from this system at this point in time. Otherwise, the, Atlantic's, the Atlantic basin is, is quite quiet and we don't anticipate any other systems becoming tropical cyclones over the next seven days. We do, however, have a tropical storm in the Pacific. This is Tropical Storm Dora that formed uh, uh, yesterday as a tropical depression and is now a tropical storm to the southwest of uh, mainland Mexico. Right now, Dora has maximum sustained winds of already 60 miles per hour. It's strengthened rather quickly. It's moving off to the west at around 16 miles per hour, and we're expecting that westward and then west-southwestward motion over the next five days. It's going to take the system across the open waters of the eastern Pacific, uh, but we do expect Dora to strengthen to a hurricane as soon as tonight and then to major hurricane strength as we get later into this week and likely headed for portions of the central Pacific basin as we get into uh, uh, the next, uh, next week uh, as we move uh, through the weekend. Uh, so what's happened so far this season in terms of the Atlantic Basin? We've had five named storms going back to our unnamed system from January all the way through what became our first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic Basin, Hurricane Dawn up here in the central uh, uh, mid, mid, mid portions of the, uh, the, the northern Atlantic uh, became our first hurricane of the season in the month of July. We've had uh, three other named storms, Arlene and Brett, that formed in June as well as, uh, excuse me, Arlene that formed right in, in the Gulf of Mexico in early June and Brett and Cindy that formed in the deep tropical Atlantic in June as well, quite unusual for that time of year. We've also had five named storms now in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, three of those have already gone on and become hurricanes, including uh, Calvin, which became a major hurricane and impacted portions of the Hawaiian Islands last month. And now we have Dora, which is well on its way to becoming a hurricane as soon as later today. So what can we expect? as we get into the peak of the hurricane season. So this is what we call our campfire diagram, and it shows the a number of tropical storms and hurricanes on a given day over the last 100 years in this red curve and the number of hurricanes in the yellow curve. Uh, the, the shape is pretty much the same, going all the way from May 1st through December. And what you can see here is this is based on uh, the period of activity in the Atlantic Basin from 1944 up through 2020. And it gives you an idea of how the typical activity in the basin evolves as we go through the hurricane season. So here's where we are August 1st. And you can see the rapid increase we see over the next month to six weeks in the red curve and the yellow curve as the Atlantic hurricane season reaches its peak in early September and then begins to tail off as we go through the month of October. But the vast majority of, uh, of tropical storm and hurricane activity in the Atlantic Basin happens in the next three months. So uh, even though things might seem relatively quiet right now, that's not that unusual for late July and early August. But we do tend to see that ramp up in activity as we head through August, September, and then even lasting well into October and, and then tailing off typically as we get late into the season in November. Um, here's what the typical activity looks like in terms of where storms form in the basin as we get into the month of August. So the, uh, the warmer colors are showing more concentration of storms in those particular areas, but you'll see that the entire basin is essentially uh, primed for activity as we get into August. The waters have warmed up. This is sort of a leading into the peak of the hurricane season. We can start to get longer track systems coming out of the deep tropics toward the Caribbean, recurving off the east coast of North America or moving into the Gulf of Mexico. So this is, uh, again, a reminder that everyone in the basin is at risk of tropical storm and hurricane activity as we now move through the next few months. Uh, a reminder of NOAA's seasonal forecast. This is going to be updated uh, as we move later into August, but the forecast for May is a calling for most likely scenario and near normal level of activity with 12 to 17 named storms. We've already had five, five to nine hurricanes. We've already had our first hurricane. We haven't had any major hurricanes yet, but we are expecting one to four. So again, Near normal is not great news. That's a lot of storms, a lot of hurricanes, a lot of major hurricanes that could be affecting the basin here in the next uh, few weeks to months. So everybody, again, needs to be uh, ready and have their hurricane plan in place. Uh, and one reason why 
the Atlantic Basin starts to get more active as we move into August and September is the warm waters. And these are sea surface temperatures across the Atlantic. This is in degrees Celsius, but 28 is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see that the entire tropical Atlantic up into the subtropics certainly was warm enough and has been warmer than average by a degree or two Celsius for most of the hurricane season so far. But this is why that Atlantic Basin is primed for activity as we move into the, uh, into the peak of the season. However, we do have El Nino ongoing and the somewhat uh, you know, impacts of El Nino tend to increase wind shear, dry air, some sinking motion across portions of the tropical Atlantic. So it'll be, we'll have to see how these forces interact with each other and these different competing factors play out over the next few months will determine exactly how busy uh, the hurricane season is in the Atlantic. But a reminder that it just takes one storm affecting you and your loved ones to make it a busy season for you. So as we move into the peak of hurricane season, we said this back at the beginning of June, know your risk, get that plan in place, for the first thing you can do is find out if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone, go to your state, local, county, city emergency management webpage, find out if you live in one of those storm surge zones because that will form the basis of your entire preparation plan if you might be asked to evacuate your home. Have that evacuation plan in place now, know where you're gonna go, how you're gonna get there, try to evacuate tens of miles, not hundreds of miles if you're asked to do so by your local officials. A reminder that water is responsible for about 90% of the fatalities in tropical storms and hurricanes in the United States. The combination of storm surge, freshwater flooding, inland from rainfall, and surf and rip currents kill the vast majority of people in the United States from tropical storms and hurricanes. So again, know your risk, go to ready.gov and you can find information about how to put a, a hurricane a preparation kit and make a plan for you and your family. So that wraps things up from the Hurricane Center today. Please stay tuned, keep checking hurricanes.gov for that tropical weather outlook every six hours. That'll be your first sign that you have something to watch and keep track of and uh, be safe and uh, check back in with us throughout the hurricane season. This is Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.